Okay, try to give you a quick update here. MP Super Diff is super junk. Made in Taiwan. Now, when I investigated this, I had difficulty finding a Super Diff to begin with. And the place I, I bought it from placed an ad and it said it was a bug pack made in USA. And, of course, you saw it right there when I received it. It said MP, made in Taiwan. And it is what it is. You get what you get. Double snap ring, double trouble, double junk. So I want to show you the Super Diff. And it looks like a good one, but the metal is soft. And these are soft anyhow. It's kind of a cast material. The factory ones were a cast, but I think they tempered it. And I, I mean, it had all the earmarks of a better one. It had the oil grooves here. It, it's like most of the, the stuff that we are find that are as inferior. It appears close, but it ain't quite finished. It ain't quite done. They have to cut corners someplace. And I'm not always shopping for the lowest price. I was just trying to find you know, of the best quality. This is not something that you scrimp on. This takes a real beating. Now, what happened was it blew out the snap rings, and the snap rings were of probably poor quality. I tried to use a German snap ring, and they would not work, and I'm not sure which of these gave out. When I took off the side cover, one of the snap rings was laying in the side it had blown out the other one was still in there and it uh, created a space where the side gear that engages the spider gears pulled back and it just ripped the hell out of these gears this one is the good one and here's the bad one I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera but you can see the uh, the edges of the gear and they just they, they quit meshing here's the spider gear you can see the uh, the damage here, it, and that's what happens. And you rock it back and forth. It was locked up. It happened on level ground. It was just pounding, and uh, we were able to tow the car. That's the craziest thing. I always worry about these uh, types of uh, uh, differential things creating a situation where you can't move the car. But it always seems like... You hook on a toe strap and you get a little crunch and, and that's the other thing. Now, it could have been a tooth. It could have been a tooth that started the whole thing. These are all used gears that I pulled out of some something else. I gave them a visual, but I don't have the tools to magnaflux something or look at it close. There could have been a fracture or a crack or something in there. And that's what started the chain reaction because if you get that extra material coming off and staying in the gear, then of course it's going to try to force things and it just overcame the snap rings. Who, uh, who knows, by the time you tow it two miles back through the sand, you've got so much damage in there, who's to tell what started the whole thing in the first place. Now there's another ring that goes in there. Uh, must be laying around the shop here someplace. I'm in my friend's house. Luckily, I had somebody here that had a garage and they let me work in it. Now, in order to get the bearing to pull off, I just about broke my, my puller. And I've used that thing for years and years and years. The only way I could get the bearing off so that I could pull the ring gear off was to take a, a sawzall and cut a groove right down inside the metal there almost through I didn't want to get into the bearing because I don't have spare parts oh there's one of the, the parts I was looking for right there maybe that's maybe that's the bad one <laughs> there's what I this is the bad one this is supposed to be perfectly flat <laughs> and you can see where it's chewed up and and bent over and this is the tab that keeps it from rotating it goes in uh, that little divot right right there in the side when you assemble this thing that has got to go in there and it goes up against the side gear and it keeps it from turning and then the snap rings are the next thing and so 
I don't know. If you're a transmission guy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, probably none of this makes any sense. But a heads up on this MP Taiwan Super Diff. As far as I'm concerned, it's super junk. So, I brought the original stock Super Diff with me. Because in the back of my mind, seeing that Taiwan and MP and stuff, I thought, well, it did work before. So, I better... I better bring this along just in case, and I'm so glad I did, and it's back in the transmission. Now, as I was putting things together, the ring gear just fell in place over the differential. It did not do that the last time I put it in. I had to reuse the ring gear bolts, and they say, do not do that. Use them only. It's a one-time use things because bolts stretch. Now, I repeat that bolts stretch steel stretches it has elasticity and memory I was working in a chill plant and we had a huge three inch thick steel slab that goes on the end of a carrier chiller and it had uh, three quarter inch bolts that means the bolt itself was three quarter it was like an inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter socket on the head of that bolt and we used to reuse them every year and then all of a sudden we had problems with the gasket not holding it would blow it out and we had a company come out look at it and they asked us about those bolts and they said yeah your bolts are done they they they're not holding it and imagine that uh the torque rating on that we were torquing them up to 225 pounds with a three foot uh, torque wrench and three-quarter inch drive and it it stretched the bolts and it messed us up now metal stretches and that ring gear uh, shouldn't have gone on that easily it should have had to heat it up and then put it on so the next thing was I go to put in these axles and I'm looking at the axles to see if there's any damage and what do I see on the axle See if I can get the camera to focus on that. There's a crack here. Can you see that crack? It was all covered with oil right there on the lower right about 5 o'clock. It's going at a 45 degree angle across it. I saw that crack and I said, uh oh, I'm not putting this back in here. This is, uh, this is about ready to go. I don't have my hand free, I'm sorry. But if it's a hairline crack. It's right there. Okay. So now I got to come up with an axle, even if I'm going to use it as an older transmission. So I ended up finding a replacement axle. I had to give 75 bucks for this baby, and uh, this is the one that that I ended up getting for it. And this is the one I'll put back in. But in the process of chasing down this axle, we went to this fellow's place and. He had a used, complete, close ratio transmission, swing axle, with disc brakes on it. And I did not want to pay what he was asking for. It was a used transmission, and he told me it's good. This transmission, all the internals of the transmission were working fine, and are still working. And, but you can only, <laughs> there's only so much life. You know, let's say that let's say that this end of this table is the lifespan from here to here of anything. Half the life is right here, okay? You get, you get the concept I'm saying? This is the lifespan, just like a human being. Average person lives 80 years old, but you never know. You get cancer, you die early, you get in a car wreck, you never know. So, how much life is left in this transmission? It's the culmination of three transmissions. It, there's no way of knowing. Of course, that look at a new car. Look at all the all the callbacks. It's made by man. It's not perfect. It's it's you know, depends on how it's used. And I have this in severe condition, so not making excuses. I'm just pointing out, no matter what you have, it has a lifespan. So I didn't want to spend a lot of money on an unknown used transmission and be going through this changing. It's a royal pain in the butt. But uh, my luck was holding out. 
and uh, we got it in the car and it's got heavy duty aluminum side covers on both sides it's got some pretty pink paint there <laughs> I had to change out a boot and uh, it's got disc brakes on it these are the cheap MP disc brakes but boy I'm telling you they work way better than those drum brakes uh, here's uh, some oil both side covers are dripping that's after sitting overnight it's the next day after I put it in and test drove it so I'm pleased that is less leakage than I had with that other case. Yeah, that's just life. You guys that have to have everything perfect, this is not the hobby or the sport for you. Engines and transmissions leak oil, especially in severe duty and when it's 50 years old. And that is an old case. I think it's a 437 ring and pinion the way it felt. But uh, we took it out, running around in a field down the street and it stays in gear it feels to me like it's a 437 which even pleases me more because that means I'll be probably able to get it occasionally into fourth gear and third gear seems good so yeah we're just uh, I got this bungee cord on here because I had trouble with uh, this fan shroud and the the uh, I don't know it's shaking I don't know if the engines out of balance or what uh, you never know these toys are not 100,000 miles, change the oil and change the points and drive it types of toys. It's a mechanic's dream. This is the kind of toy that you, 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 for every hour you play with it, you're going to spend an hour working on it. And that's just the way it is. If you're not willing to do that, this ain't the hobby for you. And, you know, personally, when I see, uh, all these side-by-sides and and uh, razors and they all have their weaknesses if you they, there's a limitation and there's design problems and there's manufacturing problems in anything this is a severe element it's a lot of fun it's to me it's addictive I would rather do this than than a lot of other addictive things out there uh, gambling women drugs booze there's a lot of things that can be bad habits and car guys that's their habit you know we just we just like the feeling of speed we like the sensations we like the satisfaction of of building something that you can take out and and put into severe duty and and it lives to, to you know for an undetermined amount of time so at any rate I wanted you guys to get an update and we're gonna be we are back rolling everything's looking good I made a little modification here on the shock absorbers I cut a little bit off the front snubbers uh, which is the travel stop so that I'm getting a little bit more of the travel that was there and not being used on the front and I'm hoping uh, this is where the the snubbers came on my little test drive out here in the field and I'm hoping when these go all the way down to full travel and stop that the tire does not arc up and touch these shock absorbers because that will ruin the shock absorber. It bends the shaft. It takes out the seal. They're not made to take side loading. They're just up and down. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we're going to get some more time run time on it and I'll post it up. And hopefully uh, I'll be able to... Uh, Meet up with some of you folks in person. You know what my trailer looks like. And so if you go to the, the uh, if you happen to be camped near the staging areas there and you see me pull in, uh, be sure and stop by and say hi. And you know what it look like. You watch my videos. I'd, I'd love to ride with you. And if you don't have a toy, I'll be happy to give you a ride. And we'll spend a little time chatting and maybe make a video or something. And... I'll promote your channel and we'll have some fun and we'll get her done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.